this is one of the uh, one of the things that I run into uh, when I'm out there working with things is that I get uh, sent a, a workbook and it's got a table of data in it like this because this is how users generally think. They uh, they create this listing that says, hey, I've got this uh, my sales categories down the right, my dates across the top, and I've got a whole bunch of values in this. And then, of course, they want to have it looking at it a little bit differently. They say, geez, I'd really like to have my beer, wine, liquor across the top and my dates down the side, and maybe I want to do some other things with it. And you start thinking, man, it would be awesome if this was actually in a source that we could use to drive a pivot table. But unfortunately, this is kind of a pivot table output. So wouldn't it be awesome if we had a tool where we could just go and say, you know what, I'm going to take this area right here. I'll take the whole thing, actually. And we go to, say, Power Query, and if I could say... I want to take the data from a table, and it popped in the thing that recognized my table had headers, and if I could say, okay, no problem, and if it pulled it into Power Query, and then we'll just wait for that to happen, as it reads my range and puts it into a nice little table for me, come on, wouldn't it be nice if I could just go and say, maybe remove this last column, and I could filter out this row that says total, we don't need that anymore. And then in order to unpivot it, instead of going through all kinds of wild and wonderful work with Excel, wouldn't it be awesome if I could just grab one column and then go over to a command like transform and click unpivot and unpivot other columns and build an unpivoted data source right out of that table. Wouldn't that be cool? Damn, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to just go clean this guy up right now. I'm going to rename this and we'll call this one date and I'm going to go... Uh, Right now it's being uh, looked at as text here, so we're going to go and change this from text into a proper date, and maybe we'll go and call rename this guy here to quantity. Uh, I'm going to try and spell that right just because uh, I think it's better when you do. And we'll call our table sales. And then I can hit apply and close, and it'll go in and drop it into a new worksheet for me in a second. So we know we've got a gray table. It's going to turn green. That means Power, or power Query is done with it. And then, of course, I could always go back if I've got a table of data. I mean, what do I do with a table of data? You've got to pivot it. I mean, that's what they're for. So we'll go click Pivot Table, add it to an existing worksheet. I'm just going to drop it over here for right now. So I can obviously go and rebuild my table with my quantities in it exactly as it was on the first worksheet. But, of course, what's the point? I mean, I've got my row totals, I've got my column totals, but now I want to see it different. Well, I can go back and I can insert a new pivot table to look at my data in a slightly different way. So now we can go and say, let's throw our sales category across the top and our dates down the left here and throw my quantities in the middle. Perfect. Of course, I could change that out to averages or whatever else. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I, I've been dying for this feature for years. But then you get the question as, well, what happens? Well, you know what happens is users come along and say, okay, I'm going to send you a new report here, and I'm going to give you the sales now for January 8th, 2015, and it's going to have some numbers in here. Oh, and then, of course, you know what users do? They always try and screw you up, so they go and they add new categories of stuff too. Let's say cider, and uh, we'll throw a quantity in this one as well, 123 of those. And this has got a formula in it, so we better run that across. And this guy here should have a total in it as well. Make sure that's all there. Now, we've already gone through. We've done the work with, uh, with Power Query. I notice I got this in a different year, so I'm going to set that back to 2014. Now that it really matters. Wouldn't it be cool if all I needed to do to refresh this was to just right-click on it and say refresh, and it pulled that information in, and then I could go back to my pivot tables and also see that they can be refreshed as well. And it's got all the information in there. I love this feature. Power Query does a ton of different stuff, but this is just one that uh, you know you can work with this stuff when people send it to you in an output format. That's always been the problem with pivot tables is that pivot tables need to consume their data in this format, and that's not the way users think. The whole idea behind a pivot table was taking a table of data and turning it into the way that users do want to see it, mm -hmm. but it's never worked well going the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Um, you know, oh man. Um, because yeah, just you know, I had a client that had projects across the top, and people down the side, and to unpivot that thing immediately versus try to write some formulas and then drag stuff around, or, you know, dealing oh, with uh, relative and absolute sale references. To yeah, to oh man. Yeah. 
Yes. Somebody needs to get him a bucket of water, guys. Man, Staying hot. <laughs> that, that's, that's five sriracha bottles all the live long day. <laughs> With all of that, the power query, power view, power pivot, all of that stuff. Well, I'll say to the audience, I mean, for anybody that hasn't used Power Query yet, I mean, it's a free download. You just go, uh, go out, do your Google or your Bing search for uh, download Power Query. It works with Excel 2010 or Excel 2013 Pro Plus, um, and that's just like that. That's just one piece of it. It is such an incredibly powerful program for cleaning up data, taking I don't know, I mean, ASCII files that have all kinds of garbage in them and, and putting it into a proper table or talking to Excel files or importing individual CSVs or text files or entire directories worth, um, stuff off the websites, whatever. I mean, there's so many things you can do with it. It's just an amazing, amazing yeah. tool. So now let me ask you one thing is um, I haven't figured out how after you uh, save a file that you've done something like that and then you open it back up, it starts asking you about some connection. Uh, I haven't run into too many of those. I do on occasion. Um, when you go and, and uh, go to refresh your data, it may ask you whether or not you're working with public or organizational or private data. Um, if you get into one of those, you have the option of either trusting the data source, um, which you can do in that interface, um, or if you – I just recently did a job for a client where we actually create the, uh, the data files um, – Using VBA, we create the data files on the fly, and then using Power Query, we actually um, hash out on the fly what the file or what the uh, path is to those individual data files. Um, so with that particular one, uh, and I, I actually just posted a rant about this on my blog uh, yesterday, um, because there is a, a problem in the interface there that um, that we don't. Uh, have a, a lot of control on it, but there is a button called Fast Combine, and if you click the Fast Combine button, uh, it's a workbook level setting, and that makes those error messages dis disappear. And it just says, okay. "All right, fine, I'll just do it for you anyway. Leave it alone." So that, that's the sort of the workaround of that. Okay. Um, thing. I can uh, I can probably show you that actually. Uh, yeah. Where are we here? So if I go back to uh, this guy here and this one, uh, can you see my screen now? Not yet. No. Okay. Um, let me try that one more time here. Screen share on that one. Uh, you got to click the start button. That's important. Um, so when you're going through and you're working with Power Query here, there's this great big, uh, or well, it's not great big because I got a shrunk down monitor, but this fast combine button here. If I were to click that and make sure it's selected, then at this point I can go back and I can do, I can enable it, and then I can refresh my uh, my queries, and it won't prompt me for any of the security or or uh, information settings. Okay. So that, that's how you get past that one. Okay.